Isn't that amazing? Look at this. Now, that's spectacular. I hike a lot, but this is spectacular. Holy smokes. All right. Going up a little bit. I'm at the Bachman Pass, but I want to find the highest spot on the pass. Oh, wow. 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 night we had a great conversations two older folks uh, from uh, Edmonton give me some great ideas of where to hike now I'm curious because they're gonna cut across somehow and they're thinking of going up over there and on the other side of that mountain is a big plateau at 2,800 feet that's apparently amazing so I think this is where I'm gonna stop for lunch look at that view huh huh not that amazing? Got my soup. Handy. And then, because it's so windy up here, and I just don't want to catch a chill, I'm gonna take out a jacket or fleece. Put on a fleece. And then, get my stove. <coughs> stove. Fuel. Grab my mug. And we're going to be in business. Whoops, trying to work too fast. There. Get that going. The handy dandy stabilizer base. Okay. Put that. Two cups of water for the soup. Don't need to boil too much, otherwise it just wastes fuel. A little bit for good measure.
Just like that, we're in business. What a spectacular place for lunch. says here uh, in the pot bring two cups of water to a boil add noodles break up if desired cook three minutes or occasionally stirring seasoning soup packets so this is just uh, chicken broth Soup. Trail somewhere up ahead. Took a side trip, but I'm off the trail now. I gotta refine the trail. doing something original and here's footsteps so somebody else came here who knows when same idea go look over the ridge see what's there and then they're coming up exactly the same way I came up wow Habakton Pass 2,300 meters Here on in, it's downhill to John John Campground, about 45 minutes away. Just a little commentary in French while I'm thinking. I'm trying to think about what's going on in Gaspésie. What's going on in Gaspésie? Puis en île d'Anticosti, là, des gars comme John Pinot qui pensent que, que l'île d'Anticosti va attirer des touristes. Puis ils pensent que l'infrastructure, c'est le secret. Non, 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 M. Pinot, c'est pas l'infrastructure qui attire les touristes, c'est la beauté. Ici, là, regardez autour de moi, OK? Je suis dans un paysage qui est absolument, absolument, absolument de toute beauté. Puis des touristes, là, j'en rencontre à tous les jours durant ma randonnée. Puis ils viennent d'un peu partout dans le monde parce qu'ils viennent ici. Il n'y a aucune infrastructure. Il n'y a même pas de toilette. Il faut qu'ils portent tout sur leur dos. Votre petit transanticosti, là, le petit voyage de, de 100 km que le monde fait, là, ça, c'est rien. Ici, on fait des centaines de kilomètres, des, des, des 200 km, puis le monde vient de partout pour le faire parce que c'est de toute beauté. Si vous pensez que moi, je vais aller faire une randonnée sur l'île d'Anticosti, 
quand euh, je peux voir ça au lieu. Hey, j'ai des nouvelles pour vous. Bullshit. Puis comme je l'ai dit auparavant, l'île d'Anticosti, là, dans 10 ans, on n'en parlera plus. Il va y avoir 50 habitants sur l'île, ça va être fini. Vous avez fourré l'île, M. Pinot. Fourré l'île. Well, I'm heading back into the trees. Wow. I'm almost dizzy walking here, like I'm looking down and it's just a massive cliff. I'll tell you one thing though, maybe I'm dizzy because I'm thirsty. I I should have refilled with water back there. It's been about 30 minutes since I had water, so uh, I drink a lot of water out here. I, sometimes I try to count and I lose ca count, but I, it's easily three, four liters of water while hiking here. Luckily, water is super plentiful. This is John John Campground. By now, everybody knows they're all typical. They're all the same. Come up here. A couple of tent pads. I'll probably choose this one. Another one up there. And the hanging cable. Yeah, it's four o'clock and uh, it was a good hike. I did uh, 16.9, 17 kilometers today. It's my plan was to be here the the rest of the trip or the you know tomorrow's destination is only 9k away which is the lake uh, I could probably make it tonight easily with a lot of sunlight left but I'm just tired and and why rush it um, it looks like I'll probably have this campsite all to myself tonight which is which is nice I mean company is fine but uh, it's also nice to be alone <clears throat> oh I just swallowed a bug so I'll uh, I'll just read my book and make a nice dinner later on and relax. is inflated. That's it. Sleeping bag. And some clothes for tonight. Is ready. My pants and a long sleeve shirt. My gloves, as I need them. And I might just wear a clean t shirt around camp tonight. Or maybe not. Uh, and camp is set up. Silty. I mean, when you see it flowing in the creek, it's almost gray in color. So um, I got the filter, you know, I got the uh, hydro blue filter here, so I might as well use it. So it's surprising that this bag actually holds a liter. there. Just 
starts going right away. I'll have to devise something where I have a bag hanging. The other thing that would be handy is if if I had if I came off the bag and went through a tube and then through the filter. So if the bag was a little bit higher and you had a hydrostatic column on because uh, right now the only column of pressure is 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 this height of liquid but if I could double the height then you probably speed up the process quite a bit but you can tell right away that water is nice and clean compared to uh, it, it, it definitely removes the silt a bit of time but I got nothing else to do. Time is something I got a lot of while I'm out here. Well, actually somebody else showed up so I'm not alone here. There's a traveler from uh, Seattle who did a pretty long day today. He did 24 kilometers and uh, he's already gone to bed. We chatted a little bit but uh, so this is this is what it looks like alone at night out in the middle of nowhere so I am currently 28 kilometers from the trailhead so it's it's as isolated as you can get not much to do at night you just especially when there's no fires usually if there's a lot of fire I'd make a fire right now and I'd stay by my fire at least till sunset but uh, there's no fire tonight so got a hot chocolate my my food is hanging, my tent is set up. I just need to put my pack under my awning. The pot can stay here. And I'm just gonna read a couple of chapters of, uh, of a book and uh, then I'll go to bed. It's not complicated. And then get a good night's sleep and then uh, get an early start. Actually tomorrow I'm in no rush. I'm only doing 8.9 kilometers. So that's two hours of hiking. So I might just get up and take my sweet time and then get going. I look forward to being at the lake. Once I'm at the lake, there's more exploring to do around the lake. So, a um, place like this, there's really nothing to do at night. It's raining outside. I'd rather it rain outside at night than during the day. But actually, a little rain's good. It's helping clear the air of all the uh, smoke from the forest fires. So it's currently uh, just around midnight. Seven. It rained all night long, like really all night long, probably a good eight, nine hours. So it's going to be wet up there, but I'm going to go for a late start and um, try and let this dry. But more importantly, let the trail dry. A lot of willows and these passes and these valleys and uh, hiking in willows is no fun. You just get soaking wet. Scott from Seattle, he was the uh, 
camp companion last night. He showed up around what, seven o'clock? I thought I was going to be alone, and then uh, out of the blue, he showed up. But he's uh, he's packing pretty light, and he's moving a lot. He's uh, he's covering a good twenty plus kilometers a day. How many days are you doing the looping? Four. Four days, three nights. Yeah. So. So four point, and then here at John John, and then four point. Yeah. So today he's got a solid 24k day and he's got a bit of climb ahead of him <laughs> and then he's got his fancy skirt but that he's going to appreciate that because he's heading up the trail that i came down last night which is all willow infested so well carly i'm not sure if i know what live life among the redwoods means i kind of do i mean live in the wilderness for sure uh, but here in uh, northern Alberta, there is no redwoods, but as you can see, I'm on the Brazu Trail right now. And this whole area, it's surrounded by big, tall black spruce and mountain pines. And uh, it's mostly uh, evergreen trees, but uh, it's been a fantastic journey. Anyways, I, I'm, I'm on day three, or yeah, this is morning. One, two, this is morning three. So I switched shirts. I'm wearing one of uh, Carly Design's uh, shirts. The last one I wore on the Skyline uh, got a good workout, four days, and it did great. And uh, I love these shirts because they're synthetic. I don't bring cotton out here because cotton just doesn't dry. So you'll see as I'm wearing the shirt during the day, I'll, I'll show later on, it'll, it'll get soaking wet with my sweat. Sorry if it's disgusting, but then I can take it off or even without taking it off, just sitting on top of, or some of these passes, wherever, just the wind will dry it off real quick. So um, anyways, if you're watching this video and you enjoy the video and you're wondering where I got the shirt, it's from uh, Carly's Design and, uh, and there you go. I hate packing wet, but there's no sun's stuck behind that mountain right now so I'm just gonna pack it because I can't wait too much longer I mean it's 9 30 so I don't like you know I'm not gonna sit around camp and do nothing so what I do in a situation like this is I just fold it loosely and I'm actually gonna just I'm just gonna stuff it attach it to the side of the pack somewhere and then Later on, you know, hopefully in an hour or so when I'm hiking somewhere along the trail, the sun will break out. And when the sun breaks out, then I'll take a break and I'll just pull this out and I'll just uh, uh, let it dry in the sun. And then, because right now it weighs another pound just because of all the water in it. So I'm just gonna stuff it on top here like that easy access so once I'm on the trail later on I just uh, pull it out and away we go all right so everything's good got a bit of water don't need much water as there's creeks all along psychological I just don't like carrying wet gear because you know you're carrying this extra weight for nothing <sighs> my nose is dripping all right well John John was a good campground beautiful actually and the river is just far enough from the tent pads that I slept well and uh, as the days go by and I spend more nights in the wilderness you get used to it you know now today I know I'm going to see people all day because people completing the loop in the reverse direction. So there's probably a whole bunch of people at Brazu Lake that I'll cross paths with. And then I'm sure uh, Jonas Cutoff must have been full last night from people who came in on Friday night and then went to Jonas. People came in on Friday and went to Boulder or Four Point and then crossed over Jonas Pass and got to Jonas Cutoff last night. So now they're all doing the loop and they're going to go to Brazu and then finish tomorrow. So it's the middle of the weekend. What day is today? Friday, Saturday. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's a, a statutory holiday. It's Labor Day. So there's going to be a lot of people on the trail today. I hate going through willows like this. 
you get wet. They just rub against your legs and you get wet. A few minutes into the walk and pants are already starting to get wet. Push them aside with the stick, but it doesn't matter. But these are quick dry pants. So being a little wet's no big deal. The sun will come out and everything will dry. And by wearing synthetic clothing like this, anytime I stop, everything, you know, you stop somewhere windy and you just get dry right away. Day three, pants are already wet. Oh well, it's a beautiful day. See how those are a clean cut. Wardens do patrol and uh, wardens do come out here on horseback and they'll bring chainsaws and then they'll do a trail cleanup, you know, every couple of years kind of thing. Because you get a, a place like this, which is an avalanche slope and stuff just falls down here and then it can be really frustrating when it, a lot of big logs block the path. Sometimes it's almost impossible to just hop over them because they're all stacked so close together. So wardens do on, uh, on some of the popular trails like this do a really great job of, uh, of clearing the trail. These are the people that stopped on uh, the first day to pick me up and then I asked them where they were going and they were going to Nigel <laughs> Trailhead. So they stopped at the trailhead. Good thing they did. <laughs> So now we cross paths again. They're doing the loop in a different direction. And just like that, the scenery changes. Now I'm in some really old growth forest. Look at the size of these trees. Look at that, it's already dead. But look at the trunk on that thing. You know, these trees are competing for light. I mean, that's, that's a pretty nice, impressive tree. Old growth, never been cut. I don't know, I'm mixed opinion on that. Um, 
we're living a, a summer season of massive fires in British Columbia. And uh, yeah, fire is a natural way for a forest to regenerate itself. But And the parks experimented, I think, with controlled burns. But I think there is some some value in allowing some logging. I don't know what kind of logging it could do. Maybe it's maybe they'd allow some sort of old-fashioned logging with horses or something. But these are trees that are worth a fortune and they are a renewable resource. And if we don't log them, then they'll catch on fire. So, you know, if you look at the one right behind me, that's dead. So there's dead trees everywhere, especially where the pine beetle gets in. And, uh, you know, I think, well, I know Yellowstone, you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, had a devastating fire and the regrowth after, and people were upset because the park let the fire go. But the regrowth after is amazing because you know, there's no animals in the park anymore. I don't, I, I rarely see animals. You don't see deer or elk around here. You'll see, you know, they're, they're in lower elevations. It's because there's nothing to eat here for them. And, and if this forest was allowed to regenerate, so if it was harvested or had a fire and then all the new stuff starts growing, all the little stuff attracts uh, a whole new wildlife. You know, the, the animals come back in. So I don't know, I, I'm not the manager of the park, but I, I think I think they're mis making a mistake by not harvesting some areas of this park. So I've been gone an hour now, and uh, the forest opens up. I got this nice creek here. There's a bridge down there, but I'm actually going to stop. I'm going to stop right here and dry my tent and have a little snack and uh, relax. First glimpse of Brazu Lake campgrounds at that far end. Oh man, this trail just offers up everything. Like amazing mountains and then this kind of stuff and the lake over there. And I don't know what that pile is, but I got to go look at it. I got to go explore that because I got all day and I that's just that's some weird geological formation and I got to go figure it out. Don't see any fish. And a little chipmunk. Chipmunks everywhere around here. All right, this is way too cool. What this looks like to me is some big erratic, some big, the glacier retreating dropped a big 
piece of sandstone limestone just so it might have been a nice chunk at one point and over the years just the erosion just the rain has made it all fall apart now it's all crumbling and it just looks like a pile of sand here i'm going to climb it i mean what is this i think it's exactly what i think it is just a big eradication isn't that cool let me pan and show you guys where i'm at Isn't that amazing? Let me pan it differently. Trails up there. Lakes over there and the campgrounds at the end of the lake. There's a few more of these piles. There's one there, there's one there, there's one way over there. So they're just big chunks of sandstone that got deposited and has been eroding away. It is just sandstone. You wondering who I am? solid that's a bear just chewing a lot of berries just in a while just once in a while you just yell out something like hey bear just remind yourself or another thing I just do a whoop you know <laughs> let them know you're coming It's almost Canadian Shield type, of, you know, in the Rockies here, the, the rock is pretty solid. It's not the muskeg I'm used to where, where I used to live. Everything wet or east of the Rockies is a sedimentary basin. You know, the Rockies have been eroding forever and ever. And so the whole province of Alberta and Saskatchewan is basically a big giant layer, two, three miles thick of sediment. So on top of it is something called muskeg, which this is not. This is this is shield. This is good hard rock. This should be a major bridge. Razoo Lake.